In this video, I would like to show you how to use the serial wire viewer of your STM32 microcontroller to print out any data coming from your microcontroller to the debugging uh, console in that without the need to use a serial to USB uh, adapter. And furthermore, you can even trace the content of the variable you have in your program. Up till now, most of my projects were based on 8-bit microcontrollers, especially the ATmega 328P, which is found in most of the Arduino Nanos. So I decided to check out some of the 32-bit microcontrollers, and I got myself this board, which is known as the Blue Pill. Actually, this one is known as the Blue Pill, but I've got this one. I'm not no, both seems blue to me. Anyway, both the two boards are based on the same microcontroller, which is an STM32F103C8. If we grab the data sheet here very quickly, we can see that it's, uh, the microcontroller can go up to 72 megahertz, which is crazy compared to what I used to work with which is at most 16 megahertz. The microcontroller has tons of uh, GPIOs and interfaces like two I2Cs, two SPIs, three serial ports and even CAN bus and USB which is nice to have. What I wanted to talk about in this video is the SWD or Serial Wire Debug. Coming from Arduino environment, it was very useful to have the serial monitor to print out any data coming from a sensor for example, and I mostly use it to debug my program as well. And I want something similar to that with this board. And uh, what I found most people do is they just use uh, a regular USB to serial uh, dongle and connect it to the board and I was surprised that not many videos mentioned the SWD which can do more than just that. Actually the SWD is a uh, improved version to GTAG. You can actually program your microcontroller with it, you can debug your programs, you can pause the program and check out the content of all the variables you have in your program and you can also use it to send messages or uh, content of some variables to the debug application. Okay, just before we open the IDE, I would like to talk about the debuggers you can use with this board. The most common ones you're gonna find is this one and this one and maybe this one on the right. If you got the four, first one or this one on the right, you are good to go. However, uh, if you got this one on the left, they are usually missing a pin, which is the GTDO, or mostly known as SWO. You can actually still program your uh, board with this one as is uh, in a debug it, but you cannot uh, exchange serial messages between the board and the uh, debugger application. You can actually modify the this one on the left to add that missing pin. Uh, all you have to do is connect a wire to this pin which is 31. So you connect a pin to that and through a 22 ohm resistor and choose one of the redundant 5 volt pins because if you can see in here the five, five volt pin is redundant so just choose one that is closest to the wire make sure to cut the trace to isolate it and solder a 22 ohm resistor to that pin once you have done that you are ready to go all left is to connect the debugger to your board if you have the same board as I do, then the, the connector is looking like this. You connect the SWDIO, the SW clock, 
the SWO we just talked about and the VDD make sure you connect it to the 3.3 volt as this uh, microcontroller works at 3.3 volt level and finally connect the ground if uh, you happen to have this one you will not find the SW clock here the SW DIO in this pin this one is the ground this one is 3.3 volt and SWO you're gonna find it in the pin B3 okay I open the IDE STM32 cube IDE I'm gonna start a new project so new STM32 projects and then I'm gonna select the my mm, the microcontroller I have which is an STM32F103C8 select it click next and then I'm gonna give the project a name let's call it SWD test for example then click next and then finish yes Alright, so the first thing I usually do is to uh, select the, the clock to use the external crystal. So in system core RCC, you select the external clock, and then we're gonna have to actually enable the debug, the S, the trace, trace SW. I'm gonna save the changes. And then in the clock configuration, I'm gonna tell it to use the maximum frequency supported by this microcontroller, which is 72, as we've seen in the data sheet. And then click OK. I'm gonna say OK. It's gonna automatically recalculate the values to give me that maximum frequency. And then I'm gonna save once more. All right. Uh, I'm gonna open the main file and I will click on the this debugging button it's gonna ask to create a new debugging configuration so choose STM32 and then click OK in the debugger uh, tab first I'm gonna plug in my debugger into the USB port and then make sure this one is selected to ST-Link GBD server. And here se check this uh, option, use specific ST-Link, and then click scan. It should be detected. Choose the right programmer. And finally click on the enable of the SWV viewer, which we are actually going to use to print out the data on the debugging console here make sure to set the same frequency or the same clock frequency we set in the clock configuration which i did 72 megahertz and here keep it to the maximum value apply then ok and now actually it is compiling the code and uploading it to the microcontroller uh, and then it pauses in order to resume the program you click on this button all right because we didn't do write anything in the main uh, function so nothing gonna happen uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the program so uh, in order to demonstrate this the first thing we're gonna need to add is actually a, f uh, a library I'm gonna add it right in here include STL. this library contain the printf function which we're gonna use and one last one more thing we're gonna actually add is a function that rewrites the rewrites the the writing function of the library to write in the debugging console all right and one last thing i'm gonna write a few lines of code so i can demonstrate all this uh, i will start first by creating a variable i'm gonna call it counter and initialize it to zero and then in the main function i'm gonna simply test 
if the counter is over 127 if so set it to 0 so I'm gonna increment first and test if it is over 127 then set it to 0 and I'm gonna print the content of that variable using the printf function and give it the counter variable and lastly I'm gonna add a delay to about let's say 100 millisecond all right so uh, we'll first check if there is any error by clicking on this hammer it's gonna go ahead and compile and detect if there is any error seems all good now I'm gonna click again on the debugging button okay so in order to see the the messages of the printf the first thing we're gonna go into this tab SWV ITM data console if you don't have it by default you can add it from the window then uh, show view SWV and you can click this one while you are there add as well the timeline graph we're gonna use it okay so once there click on the configuration button and make sure to select this checkbox the zero one then click OK and now we can resume our program All right we should be able to see the data uh, actually I forgot one important thing before actually resuming the the program make sure to start the trace I always forget this one so make sure to start the trace and then resume the program and you should actually see the data coming and uh, loops back to zero once it reaches 127 okay I'm gonna pause one cool thing actually is we can graph the content of a variable so if you go in the timeline graph and click again in the configuration we can give it a variable so check the enable of this uh, section and give it the variable name uh, one trick is actually uh, the, the the variable you're gonna give it must be declared as global so in your uh, main code the variable needs to be declared uh, outside the main function otherwise it will not find it okay so I was right here we set the enable to the counter then I'm gonna click OK I'm gonna make sure that the trace is uh, turned on this time and then I'm gonna resume the program and there you go you have the trace or graph of the content of that variable it goes up to 127 and then drops back to zero so you can actually plot any data you have which is very 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 useful all right that's it uh, I hope you found this video useful if you have any question please leave it in the video comment section and I will see you in the next one bye